Hello and welcome back. All right, so in this section, we're gonna go over what layers are, how to use them, and much more. Now in this first lesson, I wanna share with you the basics of layers and what they are and how they work. So before we get into GIMP and actually working with our layers, I wanna demonstrate layers in the real world and then we'll dive into GIMP to look at layers a little bit more closely. But first, let's define what a layer is because you may be wondering, what is a layer? Well, let me give you the official definition of a layer. So a layer, as a noun, is a sheet, quantity, or thickness of material, typically one of several, covering a surface or body. All right, so in the real world, I have a photographic image here. I have some images behind me as well. And you can consider these sheets of paper in the canvas gallery wraps that I have as a layer. So I have layer one, my image here, and let's say I want to add something to the image. I could draw on this image, and let's say I wanna add a lizard for whatever reason. And then I decide, you know what, after drawing it, I don't like that lizard, I want a dog instead. Well, I can't go back and undo it because there's no delete key for, or backspace key for this piece of paper or this layer. So what I can do instead is I can draw out a lizard on another piece of paper. So this is a layer as well. So layer one, layer two, and then I can stack the two based on my creative vision. Now, in the real world, again, we can print on different types of paper or canvas. So in this case, I have an image here of a couple that I shot and I printed them on a canvas gallery wrap. So this is another type of layer. We can have all kinds of different layers in the real world, as well as the digital world, which you're going to learn about in the next lesson. We're going to take a look at some of the different types of layers that we can use in GIMP. Now, in addition to that, let's say you have a piece of glass. So the glass, you can see through it depending on if there's any film or anything on it. So there's some opacity to that layer. So you can technically adjust the layer in the real world as well as the digital world. So we're also gonna take a look at how you can customize your layers in the digital world. So let's say in the real world, we have a piece of glass and we have three of them stacked together and each one of them has some paint on them of different colors and different intensities of those colors. So when you put those three pieces of glass together or the three layers, you can then see through different parts of the layers and you can create your artwork that way. All right, so those are a couple of different ways we can use layers in the real world. Now, one more quick demonstration about layers and then we'll dive into GIMP. Now, when I started off as a graphic designer back in the late 1980s, yes, I'm that old, uh, we didn't have GIMP or even Photoshop because Photoshop didn't come out until 1990. So what I had to do was I had to draw out my design concepts on paper. If I made a mistake, I would have to start all over before I submitted it to my client. So in this case, I misspelled the product and I had to redo this from scratch. As I began to do it more and more, I got a little bit smarter and I realized that I could put different elements on different layers. So here I have some shading for my text in this area. And then I realized I could put my title on a different piece of paper and my other content on another piece of paper as well. And then I could stack all of those as individual layers. And then if I made a mistake on one or maybe the client changed their mind on the title, I can simply remove that layer and add in a new layer. All right, so those are some ways to think about layers in the real world, but we can also apply these concepts in GIMP. Anything that you wanna do, you want to do on separate layers if possible. So content, elements, designs, other images. If you're doing a photo collage, you wanna put all of those on individual layers. So now let's take a look at how we can use these layers 
in GIMP by diving right into GIMP. Now I do have an image that's included in the section five folder called layers. So go ahead, find that image, open it up, and then we'll go ahead and get started in GIMP. All right, now that you have your layers file open, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use layers in GIMP. So we have our image and the image is on its own layer that we can see right here. And we do have another layer above it, but it does have a transparent background and we can't really see it. And it's not because of the transparent background. It's because this layer is turned off. If you take a look right here to the left of the thumbnail of the layer, you can see this little eye icon. If you click on that, you can turn the layer on or off. So right now this layer is turned off. So let's go ahead and click right here to turn it on. So if we turn it on and off, we can see that there is some paint on this layer. So think of this as a piece of glass where we applied paint to it and part of that glass or that layer does not have paint on it and therefore it's not applying any other graphic elements to the rest of the document because the paint is not applied everywhere and the paint itself or in this case in the digital world the pixels are not that intense and that's because i lowered the opacity of the pixels and I'm going to show you how to do that in the next lesson. For now let's just explore layers a little bit more. So we can rearrange and restack the layers according to what we need to do for our creative vision. So previously I showed you a lizard on a second layer that I stacked on top. So if we want to put the lizard or in this case this light, this beam of light coming down from the top behind the image, I can come down here and click on this arrow here to move it up or down. We can also come over here to our layers panel, click on the layer and then drag it below the layer. So we can rearrange the layers as needed based on what we need to achieve for that particular project. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my paintbrush tool, which is this one right here. So go ahead and locate your paintbrush tool and select it. Now, as far as the colors and the size of the brush and all that, it doesn't really matter because what I want to show you is what happens when we paint on a specific layer. Actually, I do need to make my brush size larger, which I can do from my tool options and I can resize from here. I'll go ahead and make that a little bit larger. And let's say I want to paint white on the image. Well, it's not really doing anything. And that's because I do not have the correct layer selected. So right now, my light layer is currently selected. So if I want to paint on the image itself, I need to come over to the layers panel and click on that layer and then I can paint on that layer. Now, like I mentioned previously, if I were to draw on this image of a lizard, this doesn't look like a lizard, of course, and I made a mistake, well, I can't undo it if I save it as is right now. Instead, what I wanna do is I wanna put this paint on a separate layer. So let's go up to edit and select undo paintbrush. So to create a new layer to paint on, we need to click on this icon right here. So from here, we can give that layer a name. Let's call it paint layer. And then we have some attributes that we can apply to it. We'll talk about those in an upcoming lesson. For now, we're just gonna keep everything set to the default and we're going to click OK. So now I have another transparent layer, but unlike the layer above it, it does not have any paint on it yet until I apply it with my brush. Okay. So I made a mistake. I want to undo it. I can go up to edit and select undo, or I can turn the layer off, or I can adjust the opacity of the layer if I want to 
tone it down again we'll go over that in an upcoming lesson i just want to show you some different ways to work with layers for now we can come over here and duplicate the layer by clicking on this icon if we want to i'm going to go ahead and expand my layers panel here so we can see those a little better and now i have a duplicate of that layer and if we want to we can actually move the contents of this layer around with our move tool so let's come over here and grab our move tool then we want to make sure in the tool options we have move the active layer selected so we can click on this layer now and move it around the document as needed now real quick this yellow and black slashed outline around this particular layer is known as a layer boundary and we're going to talk about the layer boundary in more detail in an upcoming lesson in this section for now let's go ahead and delete this layer by coming down here and clicking on this icon and then we're going to do the same for the other paint layer as well so these two options right here are a little bit more advanced we're going to talk about those in a future lesson i just don't want to overwhelm you with too much right now i just want to give you the basics so the last thing i want to show you before we move on is renaming our layers because it's important to rename our layers to keep everything organized because as you become more advanced creating artwork and retouching in GIMP you're going to find yourself using multiple layers dozens and dozens of layers and it's nice to have them organized by a specific name explaining what that layer is so it makes it easier to find and recognize a specific layer in case you need to go back to it and make adjustments it's real simple to do all we have to do is come over to a layer and double click on the name that it currently has and then you can rename it so i'm just going to call it sunlight and let's go ahead and save this file by going up to file and selecting save Here's the keyboard shortcut for that command or control and the letter s and we can use that because why do you think we can use save that's right because this is a xcf file which is a gimp native file and that's the file format that was attached to it originally when we opened it up and we want to save all the layers in an xcf file all right so that's it for the basics of layers in the next lesson we're going to take a look at the four different types of layers and the four different ways we can customize those layers so if you're ready to learn more about layers let's get started